Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to be presenting advanced technology for antenna arrays. Some of the problems that we have to address, limits in antenna array size, footprint, and weight, antenna range limitations, data rate limitations, and interference with communications. The challenge is to boost antenna efficiency while miniaturizing the array. Uh, we also want to increase effective antenna array density, i.e. more unit cell antennas per the size of the array. And of course, we want to reduce array size, footprint, and especially weight. The innovation is to use existing structural substrates, including glass and electronic substrates, as the antenna array substrate. Uh, as a focus, uh, we want to reduce the standard eight gigahertz antenna size by 12 times. And these targets are enabled by employing a versatile processing technology that is compatible with different substrates and conductors, and that can embed conductors in the substrate. Solution, of course, are micro antennas. Uh, we want to improve the frequency, eight gigahertz plus, and its bandwidth selectivity. These are a couple of pictures of some of the material concepts that we are processing. In the first picture, you can see that we have a conductor on glass. It's hard to pick that up, but I do have some samples with me. In this case, we can directly write the antenna pattern on a surface, or we can embed that antenna pattern in the surface. Uh, in the second picture, we have a compound semiconductor silicon carbide, which behaves as a structural support. Uh, it also behaves as an advanced semiconductor, but we have demonstrated that we can also write this antenna pattern directly on or in that material. Now, what enables this type of processing is our patented high pressure laser implantation process. And we've been able to demonstrate, as you can see by the pictures, the fabrication of fractal, uh, of fractal antennas on and in insulators, such as glass and semiconductors, such as silicon carbide. To continue on with the solutions, uh, all of our processing and all of our performance features are really controlled by laser processing. Uh, by choosing the proper parameters, and more or less tuning the process. We can tune in conductivity and permeability of the conductors, and we can also process non-metallic conductors and also transparent conductors. When I say non-metallic uh, conductors, such as in the case of silicon carbide, we have a laser process where we can convert silicon carbide into a conductor. Some of the other materials that began as ceramics that we have also performed the conversion on are things such as aluminum nitride, boron nitride, and a lot of the compound materials. Uh, we can also tune the dielectric properties using the same technique by injecting atoms into a zone that is around the conductor to control uh, the, di the, the dielectric constant, for example. Um, one thing that we have discovered is that some of the advanced glasses, for instance, that are used for displays on cell phones and computers have the correct composition and give us the proper dielectric constant for antenna design. Uh, these are the type of glasses, Gorilla uh, Glass and Willow Glass, which are some of the newer compositions. Now, uh, structural and display glass substrates, this is sort of summarizing here, and electronic substrates on aircraft, vehicles, and helmets can also be used as a substrate for the antenna array. We've also had some conversion on polymeric materials. And the whole concept here is to reduce the antenna weight by taking advantage of available real estate. To summarize, uh, we are advancing the mission capability in antenna range extension. Uh, we are supporting 
interface suppression. Uh, we are increasing the data rate uh, with a smaller size uh, footprint for the antenna. Uh, we can increase the frequency range to eight uh, gigahertz and above, and also improve upon bandwidth selectivity. Miniaturization is the key. That's what we are striving for. But because we can embed conductors, we can also improve environmental resistance. And we can also adapt ourselves to some of the newer antenna design concepts, such as fractal antennas, antennas because we have a direct laser write process that can be programmed to do so. And we have demonstrated fractal antennas on and in glass and also silicon carbide. Where we are right now is that we're trying to obtain as many design concepts that we can start to process from antenna experts. Uh, we propose further refining uh, HPLI, which is the laser implantation process on a variety of glass substrates, and also further work on silicon carbide electronic substrates for fabrication of micro antennas. We have begun to characterize the material properties of these antennas and the environmental properties, such as dielectric constant, conductivity, and permeability. And we are launching now into performance characterization, such as maximum frequency range, multipath diversity, capacity, uh, capacity increase, data rate increase. And we will be incorporating a lot of simulation. Uh, we are working with an antenna research lab uh, at the University of Central Florida, which is providing some of this capability for us. A real target that we have, though, is to take, let's say, a standard size six millimeter by four millimeter um, uh, substrate an antenna that is rated for greater than eight gigahertz and compress that down to a footprint of two millimeter by one millimeter in silicon carbide. I should close by saying um, one of the applications that we are really addressing is for drones, especially micro drones and UAV, where um, the weight factor has a big impact. Um, we understand that with aspects of our technology by decreasing weight, of course, we also decrease uh, power and increase range. Uh, the big weight factors in drones right now, I would rate them as one, the battery, two is the video feed, three is the antenna. So we are really addressing that third area with this technology. Um, we also see um, improvements since new technologies are required uh, to improve drone to drone communication, drone to base station communication, and um, also drone survivability in the field. And in this case, um, we think we are bringing some of the advances to the forefront to achieve these objectives. Okay, I thank you very much for your time. Let's say that Trigenics is partnering with Applicote Associates. We're Florida-based concerns, and we have patents that cover all aspects of the technology, apparatus, process devices, and material compositions. Thank you very much.